Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode here with your <coughs> friendly dietitian and public health expert, JJ. So today I'm going to be talking about the endocrine system. So the endocrine system is basically your organs which make hormones or secrete hormones that will go to a different part of your body. So the main one is your hypothalamus, which connects to your pituitary gland. So that's in your brain. So your hypothalamus will send signals to your organs to make hormones. So the most important of these is your thyrotropin releasing hormone, your corticotropin releasing hormone, your growth hormone releasing hormone, prolactin releasing hormone, and gonadotropin releasing hormone. So these will um, trigger or allow other organs to make the hormone that will affect your body or that will produce a certain effect. So if you stick around to the end of the, this video, you will have a, a general overview of the endocrine system, how it affects your health and how it links to some of my other videos around food. So I did a video about diabetes. We're also going to be talking about the pancreas today, as well as your thyroid, which or influences this system of as well and has an influence on diabetes as, as well as your adrenals which sits on top of your kidneys so um, let's get into it so your different organs that are involved here you have your parathyroids which are on your thyroid and your thyroid and your kidney as well as your um, adrenal glands that are on your kidney if you are a male your testes if you're female your ovaries and then your pancreas, as well as the two that I mentioned, your uh, hypothalamus and your th uh, pituitary gland. So your hypothalamus uh, is connected to both the anterior and the posterior pituitary. So it's connected to the anterior part through blood supply and through the posterior part through a nerve. So this is how the two talk to each other, the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the anterior part is where through the blood supply, the posterior part is through nerve supply. So nerve supply stimulates blood supply, meaning something has to go into the blood to travel from one to the other. So it's slightly different and it will also affect the timing. So blood supply, the effect is slower than a nerve supply. A nerve supply is instant where a blood supply takes a bit longer to have an effect. So you can feel the, the two different parts if you have a needle and you prick your finger. The pain is immediate, but the blood clotting takes some time. So that's the two different parts, the nerve and the blood. So let's start with the first one. <laughs> it's a thyrotropin releasing hormone, TSH. So your your hypothalamus is your master regulator that tries to maintain homeostasis or a balance across your body. So it's going to try and balance your body and all the effects and everything that's happening in your body. So first, let's we'll start with the thyroid. So the thyrotropin releasing hormone goes to your thyroid and stimulates your thyroid to produce T3 or T4. So T3 triiodothyronine, 80% is of what is made in your thyroid is this T3, it's the most active, and it affects your metabolism, your development, your catecholamine release, your neurotransmitters, so affecting your your uh, balance, so your fight or flight, your adre adrenaline and noradrenaline, and your other neurotransmitters as well. So that's some of the effects that the T3 and T4 will have in your body. So T4 makes up about 20% of what's made in your thyroid gland, which is the thyroxin. The thyroxin has also an effect, as I said. So uh, the metabolism, so making you feel hungry or making you feel full, how fast you digest your food, if your food is being, you know, the nutrients are being stored or if it's being used your body temperature, if it's going to be slightly higher or slightly lower. So people with a, a problem with their thyroid, they can either have too much or too little. So they can either 
store lots of energy and they your ghrelin your eating response is, is stimulate over stimulated so you want to eat too much or it can be the other way that you eat a lot but you don't gain weight meaning a lot of your energy is going out and a lot of your energy is being used so you your muscles are more active and your body reacts differently to insulin and to your your other hormones involved in those processes like cortisol for example adrenaline noradrenaline your um, other growth hormones as well and then you have another one that's also secreted calcitonin so calcitonin is involved with the ba balancing of calcium so your thyroid also helps balance the calcium in your in your system so low calcium in your blood will stimulate calcitonin release and that will keep calcium in your bones or take calcium out of your bones so calcitonin will want to keep the calcium in your bones so you want to balance between calcium in your bones and calcium in your blood if your blood calcium is low it will take calcium out of your bones to put into your blood because calcium is needed for muscle contraction and muscle movement or calcium is essential for that movement uh, your muscles cannot move without calcium so that is really essential then we'll move to the second one the adrenal glands which sit on top of your kidneys so they are really important in your blood glucose control <coughs> let me start with the two parts <laughs> you have the cortex and the medulla the cortex is the outside the medulla is the inside so out of your cortex you have cortisol your aldosterone and androgens, so male sex hormones that are released here. So cortisol increases your blood glucose so that you have more energy to use. So it stimulates your release of glucose from your muscles and from your liver. Okay, so to make glucose, to release your storage, your glucagon, how it was stored. I have a video on that process as well. It also decreases your immune system activity. So cortisol increases your blood glucose, decreases your immune sensitivity and stimulates the fight or flight response, which is your adrenaline and noradrenaline, which come from the inside, your medulla of your adrenal glands. So this is important. The fight or flight response decreases your immune response. So if you have a lot of adrenaline in your system, your immune, your immune response goes lower more adrenaline less immune response important then your aldosterone increases the reabsorption of salt sodium so it controls your blood pressure sodium where sodium goes water follows so this is really important as well for your blood volume your blood pressure and how much blood you have because sodium will move liquid will move water will move so it affects the fluidity of your blood which influences your blood pressure, it influences the amount of fluid that's moving through your kidneys and that's going to your, your heart. So your kidneys play a really important part in your blood supply and your blood pressure, your blood volume. So that's really important. So your adrenal glands help with that. Then the third one that we'll talk about is growth hormone. So as it says, it stimulates and helps with growth. So cellular growth, developmental growth as you go along in life protein synth synthesis and your met metabolic processes so the absorption of nutrients the movement of nutrients how much is stored how much is used where it goes where it uh, goes in your body so if you're exercising you have an increase growth hormone you'll have more protein synthesis because your body will want to repair that muscle it wants to go to that muscle to help it it will help to to make more cells as well and to repair your your body then prolactin is a uh, it <laughs> pro black so milk increases milk production increases breast milk production um, and then number five the gonadotropins so these will either go to your ovaries or your testes depending on what gender you are so in the ovaries it makes lh so luteinizing hormone so luteinizing hormone stimulates progesterone production. Progesterone is your feel-good, happy hormone. Progesterone makes you feel good and happy. So 
this LH also stimulates the progesterone, stimulates ovulation. Then you have your follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, which leads to follicle maturation, so egg maturation and increased estrogen. So both of these are involved in uterine preparation to um, prepare the body for pregnancy. Then in the testes, you also have the LH, luteinizing hormone, and this stimulates testosterone production, which helps sperm production. And then the FS FSH stimulates the Sertoli cells to produce androgen binding protein, which also helps sperm production. So that you have Leydig cells in your testes and Sertoli cells in your testes. So the Leydig cells are linked to the LH, your Sertoli cells are linked to FSH production. So you need all of those to have healthy sperm. And that works together with the uterine preparation. So both of these hormones from um, work on your ovaries and your testes in slightly different ways. Then I also want to talk about oxytocin. Oxytocin is one that binds, that builds relationships. It uh, helps your smooth muscle contract. And it comes from your hypothalamus through a nerve signal, so the po posterior connection with the pituitary. So it's a nerve sig signal and Oxytocin is important for your breast and your uterine preparation and contraction and movement. It's also important with regards to your urination and your blood pressure <clears throat> because it helps antidiuretic hormone be produced, which stops fluid release. So at night, you need some oxytocin because you need to produce ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, which keeps the fluid so you don't wet the bed. It can be a stim stimulus problem in children who have bed wetting until a, an older age if it's not a psychological connection. So ADH, so it's it's also, stimu it keeps water, so in dehydrated states, you will make ADH to keep water. So a vasopressor, it will keep your fluid stops urination it holds what you have okay then in your parathyroid your pth parathyroid stimulating hormones parathyroid hormone it also controls your calcium it increases the calcium in your blood and it decreases a decrease in calcium stimulates it so it will take calcium from your bones and put it into your blood so that you have that calcium so the parathyroids will work together with your thyroid to balance and control your calcium levels in your blood. Then in the kidneys, you also have your renin and your erythropoietin. The renin works with aldosterone to control your blood volume and your blood pressure. I'll do another video on the renin angiotensin tensin system, the RAS system as well, that will come a bit later, so look out for that one. <coughs> and erythropoietin is linked to your red blood cell production, so you need red blood cells. So that's your kidney, how your kidney works in your endocrine system. Then the last one, the pancreas, both has an endocrine and an exocrine function. The insulin, which has an influence on your blood glucose, which I talked about in the diabetes video. You have insulin and glucagon, which have opposite effects. Your glucagon will incre increase blood glucose, your insulin will decrease blood glucose, so they are opposites of each other. So that's a quick overview of the endocrine system. I hope this has helped. I hope it helps you with knowing how your body works, how your hormones work, what different parts of your body do, and how your body works, and how that fits in with specific foods. So you have, you need proteins, and you need fats, and you need glucose for all of these systems to work. You need your foods that stimulate cellular reproduction. You need foods that's, that help your hormone production and your hormone stimulus, like mushrooms, which balance out your hormones. They help stimulate one part and stop another part from being stimulated. So it's a, it's a, a balance, the homeostasis. So your foods will help keep this balance. So as always, to God be the glory and stay healthy.